Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Prime Talk. Today I have a special guest. Today I'm having Mark Casey. Mark is the founder and CEO of House of AMZ, which is a marketing and SEO agency for Amazon sellers. So uh, Mark, welcome to the show. Thank you very much. How are you? Good, good. Doing good. Thank you uh, so much for being with us today. And, uh, you know, thank you so much for your time. So today's episode is going to be the story of you, the story of uh, Mark Casey. You're going to share with us everything. Uh, who are you, where you are, where you're from, where were you born, where'd you grow up, how'd you begin your professional career, station to station until we reach to uh, where you are today, especially with the world of e-commerce. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. Sounds good. Okay, let's, let's start from the beginning. Where were okay. you born? <laughs> uh, I was born in New York. Um, born and raised Long Island. Which town? Which uh, part of Long Island? Nassau County in the Great Neck in specific. That's where I grew up. Uh -huh. um, it's like a very, you know, I would high class neighborhood. I would say very high maintenance too. Uh, but it's very nice, very chill. They call it affluent, and an affluent community. Yeah, yeah. But it was, it was very relaxed. Like, you know, you have your own everything. You have your own, uh, you know, four corners. Um, and it was a very nice neighborhood to grow up in, you know, very, very calm, not like the city, not hustle bustle. So it's not like Manhattan uh, full of skyscrapers and apartments and, uh, no. you know, Although you could see it. You could see it from like, you know, your backyard or my house is like next to the water. So you could like see the skyline and, and Manhattan, but you don't hear it, you know? Got it. Got it. So good, the good community and the outskirts of uh, New York city and, and uh, Long Island. So, um, all right. So uh, growing up your parents, what kind of industries were uh, they involved with? So my father owns um, a clothing like district, like a, like manufacturing clothing and designing clothing. Um, and my mother was like more into like the health field. So no one was really. Got it. So related. your father was his, uh, his, uh, a business owner as well? Yeah, business owner. Yeah. Got it. Okay. And growing up, did you uh, do anything that was entrepreneurial at Spirit? Were you trying to make money in certain ways? Yeah. Oh, you bet. If you ask my parents, like they would tell you stories beyond stories. When I was a little kid, literally, like, I'm not even kidding, a couple of years old, like, I would say like, maybe even eight years old, I could barely even speak on the phone. I was always selling things and online and doing everything. I was doing drop shipping before it was drop shipping. Uh, and what that means is that I used to, <laughs> it's very funny now that I think about it. Um, I used to call companies uh, who sold printers and I, and I used to sell them. So meaning I would reach out to someone and say, Hey, do you guys need a printer? And it was back then where everyone trusted everything. You know, when you call on the phone, yes, I need a printer. I would take my parents' credit card or I'll even take their credit card. I'll call up the company, order it straight to their house. And then I would like keep the, the in-between change, you know, or, or get it in cash. And like, I didn't even know what I was doing, but now that I'm looking at it, it's like, you know, uh, olden day drop shipping. But I was Hold on. Always... So you just randomly call people or companies or both? Both, both. I like, I would you start with my book, parents. The yellow pages, you just flip yeah, it, call somebody. I would start with my, I would start with my, uh, my, my, my parents' friends uh, who own businesses. I was like, you need a printer. And I was literally, I was like a couple, I was like under 13 years old <laughs> trying to do all this. And I was always, I was always hustling, selling things and, and doing graphics and anything you could possibly think of. I was a hustler when I was a kid. Nice. So that's one example, uh, doing job shipping old school, uh, <laughs> not, not even uh, offline, not even online. Yeah. Just calling you, but give me another example or two uh, while growing up. Uh, yeah, a bit more, yeah uh, more later years, like when you're already in the mid-teens. Oh, okay, more later years. What I would do is um, I would also be a hustler. I would basically design full, like, like let's say, like menus or brochures for companies um, and then go to them and show it to them and then they'll buy it off me. So meaning I'll do the work from before and like, oh, dang, someone already did all the work. Someone did everything. It's in front of me. I'm going to buy it. Makes them much more inclined to, to buy it. I would put there, it was a risk up front, um, but you know, it definitely worked. And then what I would do, you, do? Was, you did what visuals for them? Like, uh, what graphics. Now, I started doing like graphic design when I was like 13 years old. Um, uh, what tools were you using? Like, uh, Adobe and stuff like that. Adobe, like old, old Photoshop. And like, sometimes even Microsoft paint, like that's how basic it was, but I was, I was able to pull it off and, and, you know, I, I like made menus, I made brochures. I just presented it to them. They loved it. They paid me. And like, I was happy with like 75 bucks, you know, like it was my time that they were paying for, but you know, honestly that got my name out there. Cause I put a little like watermark on the bottom and one person saw and the word spread from there. Nice. So that's the second thing. It was one, one, one last thing. Uh, you one did the printers, thing. you did the brochures, which is great. Which is already <laughs> Give us another thing. That's, I guess, you know, the variety. I want to see kind of the spectrum and variety of your entrepreneurship uh, skills uh, when you're growing up. 
I'm trying to think. I don't know. I'm I'm just always a hustler, no matter like what you could think of. I used to like make even like different creations and stuff like that. I have crazy stories too, because like, you know, based on uh, you know, it's not always the fun and games. It's a lot of risk involved. And you know, people ask like, what was the most like I've I've been on a, a podcast and asked, what was the most expensive thing you bought? I would say my education. People will say, oh, my car is the most expensive thing I bought. But you know what? Like risks and challenges and stuff like that. That's what cost me the most. Where I learned, you know, in the beginning, I didn't used to take deposits from people. So I would trust everyone. I would do a whole job and then they'll come to me and be like, have a good day. And that's like three grand in the garbage. Um, but you know this what? This while you were growing up? Yeah. Oh my God. I have a crazy like story. Give us one. Yeah. Give one story where you kind of lost some money and, you know, it kind well, of uh, it went I will shorten this up, but people who know me know the story and they see me, they, they, they make a joke out of it. But really long story short, um, so I did, so someone contacted me to do graphics for them. It was like some kind of like store, local store who likes, does like catering and stuff like that. We said, you know what, come, you're, you're a 16, 17 year old kid, come do graphics for us and we'll pay you after the summer. Okay, you know, it sounds great. Two or three grand for a 16 year old is amazing. So I said, you know what, we'll make up, you pay me one sum, one lump sum of money and I'll give you my cost price for printing and whatever it may be. So I started everything. I started working. I, I made like 10 different logos for them. I was going all out, making connections, the newspapers, catering, everything you could possibly think of. One day she calls me. She's like, can you please send me an invoice? I'm like, sure. But like, I'm a 16 year old kid and like, we didn't even do any work. Why do you need an invoice? So give me a detailed itemized invoice. Send it over to her. Fine. Next day she says, come on, I need to speak with you. I go. She said, I went to someone here who's your competitor. I'm 16 year old. I don't have a competitor. But they went yeah. to your competitor. He said he's willing to slash all your prices in half. I'm like, you're competing with a 16-year-old kid. How are you cutting your you know, price in half? But he saw it as a business opportunity. I'm going to lose money in the first order. They're going to be, you know, reoccurring, uh, reoccurring um, client. clients. Yeah. So she's like, either you match it or I'm dropping you now. And this is after we did a whole bunch of work. Long story short, she didn't want to end up paying me. So I went, I went, uh, I went back. Like, even my parents called, like, you don't feel bad. Like, give me 300 bucks. I don't feel happy. I accomplished. She worked this whole summer for you. So I went back after summer um, like, I was, and I stood there. I'm like, give me some payment. So everyone knows the story. Just very funny. You're not going to believe me when I tell you. So it was a catering shop. So she told the guy, she's like, Eddie, make him a sandwich. So she takes the sandwich. She puts it on the counter and slides it over to me. And she's like, I hope we're even now. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, what, like, what does that even mean? I'm like, what do you mean we're hope we're even now? She just walks away. I'm like, unless there's a bar of gold in this sandwich, we're nowhere near even. <laughs> the golden and, sandwich, yeah. Exactly. And, I, I, and my father always told me, like, go take a deposit from him. Go take a deposit. I'm like, no, I trust him. Yeah, whatever. Ends up being, I lost like three grand that summer. But you know what? It taught me so well to, you know, charge it front or take a deposit. And ever since then, you know, I only benefited from benefited from it. But just that was the tuition. Funny. That Yeah, that was expensive <laughs> tuition for you to pay uh, in the real life and, you know, and, and uh, doing business wise, um, making sure that you put some uh, structures in place where, you know, there's a security just in case things go sour and, and you know, you're, you don't really, um, you know, go too sour uh, when things uh, don't, don't end up well. Okay, great. So we had the printer story. <laughs> we had the, the brochure story. We had the catering story where, um, Things kind of uh, went sour, but it taught you great things. All right, so let's uh, go into, uh, you know, when you started, uh, I guess, uh, you know, uh, graduating high school uh, to take us to that station. What year was that when you graduated high school? Yeah, I graduated high school. I was also hustling. I, I started um, I started working to do, like, graphics and more marketing, and that's where I went to, basically to college. I graduated high school early, went straight to college. What year um, was that when you started college? Where was what? What year? Huh? What, 2000 what? college when you started college what year was it when i started college 2000 maybe 15 i don't remember exactly <laughs> yeah no worries so but, 2015 um, you you know graduate high school early and you hit into yeah, I graduated uh, college high school and early went to college I, and then i started doing everything about marketing um and branding and i was all uh, even during college i was hustling i was doing work i was doing jobs on the side and everything um then leaving college um someone who i'm it was crazy how things even like turned around and happened. Just, you know, you meet someone who meets someone, uh, a family friend who I'm very close with happens to be like someone's brother-in-law. Like I was sitting down with them speaking and I had no idea who he was or what he was. He's like, come work for me. I'm like, I don't know what you do. I don't know anything. He's like, look, we, we do some Amazon. And at that time I'm like, what's Amazon? What's Amazon reviews? What, what is this stuff? So he's like, 
come work for me. And I think you have great potential. I like you. This is uh, 2015 also? No, it's a little bit after that. A little couple of years after 2015, once I finished college. Um, so what, 2016, 17? 17, yeah, around then. Maybe even so earlier. You were two years into college, fan of a friend of a friend. Yeah. And then he brought basically e-commerce and, and Amazon knocking on your door and swooped you in. Randomly yeah, says, so, come work for me. I could use your exactly. talent like you. And I'm like, okay, this guy probably has like an office of like five employees and whatever. Like, it's like whatever. So he gave me an address. He ordered me an Uber. I walked in. I literally almost fainted. I'm like, there's an operation going on over here. Maybe like 50, 60 employees working in-house. That's, and then that's just like in-house. Like the, not even the customer service, nothing. Like the people who do sales, the people who do all that kind of stuff. Um, and it was and fully e-commerce or they're doing e-commerce and brick and mortar and wholesale. What was the business so, model? So, for them? so at that time when I came in, the main focus was e-commerce and then also getting into like retail and all the stores, big box stores. Um, but what I kind of categories, one, what kind of categories were they selling? Health in? and beauty, health and beauty. Got um, it. And they were based in New York area or uh, California. So did you move to yeah. California or no? Yeah. So that, that's the thing. So I went there for a summer and then this guy dragged me over there. So he's like, let me just tell you. And whenever he told me, I was laughing in his face. I was like, what's Amazon reviews? What is this? I'll get out of here. Like, let me just stick to my marketing. So he's like, just trust me. Just stay here for a month. He ended up he, like, he, he, so it's very funny how that happened. So it's me and there's another guy who was kind of interning. Um, this guy was worked for two weeks. He got a thousand bucks. Um, when I went there, I worked for a month. I think I ended, it was a commission based, whatever. I ended up making 700 bucks. I was so upset. I'm like, you know, like leave this aside. I'm like, you know, respectfully, like screw this. <laughs> oh, um, so I, let me, I, let me get this straight. Jay. This is a, uh, you go for, to the summer to LA to California. Mm -hmm. The intern for him after he saw you in what, in the East coast saying, come try this out. Yeah. East coast. And then I was, I also, yeah, I was in LA. So he's like, you know what? You're here ready. Just come. I'm like, okay, I'll extend my you know, my everything. And, and after doing the summer, two months, you ended up in commission 700 bucks and we offered you basically to continue or stay or. or... So, okay. So there, then, then, so yeah, so I was, so backtrack a second. I was really upset. I'm like, this guy's 700 bucks. Like it's a joke. Looking back, just fast forwarding quickly. Now that was the best $700 I would have even paid to be for that summer. And that kid, you know, I met him a couple of years later, the guy who was interning, who got a thousand dollars, he's doing like real estate or something random right now. He didn't continue it at all. So this really picked it up for me. So anyways, so, so hold on. I want to, I want to take that. I want to dive into that for a minute. So why is it so valuable that 700 bucks that you made and you today where you would pay for out of that? What was the value? What would you, what was the value? I didn't yeah. realize the value at that time. He taught me everything. I almost not everything. I know he, he gave me the foundation of Amazon. Uh, he sat there, sat down or and also his employees sat down he explained to me, um, Amazon, how the algorithm works, what's important, what are people looking for? And that's kind of the basis I started. But he, he, he cared about me. He didn't just want me like, okay, to do a job and leave. He wanted me to actually break my head and understand. So what did he do? He gave me the basics and he was like, sit there and figure it out. So I would sit there every single day, a couple hours a day, trying to break my head and figure out what, what's this, what's Amazon. Like what's working, what's not working when yeah. you're trying to sell your products on, on Amazon and, you know, create listings anything, and promote Exactly. Them. Anything Amazon related. I had no idea what was going on. And like, I was like, come on, I, I don't want this anymore. And then after a time, it became interesting and then whatever. Um, right, so the then, value is if I can get this correctly, sorry to cut you in on this. So today people pay thousands of dollars to get all these master classes and courses to be able to layer after layer, build their Amazon, capabilities you said you were able to do all that full-time for two months and eventually get paid which was valuable definitely yeah i mean it goes more into that that's what kind of built my career i would never think i would be in the amazon world just because i was like okay i like marketing design and stuff like that but uh he opened up a whole new door for me that i never even knew about and then looking back now this guy does nine figures on on amazon like i thought this guy's running a small operation you know just selling a couple of health and beauty creams but it's not like that. This guy is doing nine figures. He's doing well. And so, so basically based off that, like I, I knew a couple of things here and there. And then, so someone called me, Hey, do you do the service? I'm like, I still work for him. I'm like, ah, oh, I could help you. I don't know. And then that person told his other friends, his other friend, and it started getting big. And I started really like learning a lot, you know, a lot of these things. Um, and then I got, I remember the first time I got asked to speak by an event, I was bugging out. Like, I, look, you, I'm a bubbly person. I love speaking to people. But once I get in front of a crowd, I just, I don't know. I'm like, no, I don't know. He told, I asked him, I'm like, what should I do? Should I actually go speak? Where he's 100% go. I was nervous. How long, how long were you already with him and, and working in the, in the space? Uh, two years. 2017, you kind of started in the summer. And then 2019, you're saying? 
Two years so probably, into the mix. Probably even like a little bit earlier, but no, no, because we had, we had the agency for a little longer running in the background. I kind of had both going on and he was okay with it. So the but agency uh, started when? Because you mentioned you were 2015, you were already yeah. going to school, so, so in already, college. Yeah. So already around 2016, 17, we started something small. Um, and then it just kind of grew and got bigger from there. But I had it while I was working with him. And then I told him, I was like, look, and the agency is, was all about like design, right? More of the design. No, not about design, actually. It was all about like review optimization, like how to, how to get more reviews, how to optimize your current reviews and like ranking. Um, and then I didn't even think about it. Like, yeah, my background's marketing and branding. That's what I do every day. Like, let me implement that. So fast forward, everyone's already asking me to do all these things and I'm working with them. So, we, you know, we, we parted ways in a very, I still work with them. I still help them out with a lot of things, but, you know, we, we created this agency and then, um, you know, like I've been asked to speak and then in between that timing too, I met a lot of different sellers, which also included the Chinese and everyone knows Chinese are like the biggest thing on Amazon. Like they're the ones selling and everyone has Chinese competition. So I started making friends here and there referrals and everything. And like people who really lived in China, people who were doing crazy things, people who were selling so much um, and people just, you know, just became regular friends with them, not having any interest in doing anything. Um, and then I just started learning. Like they just started teaching me things and telling me things, which I picked up. That's like where a lot of my knowledge came from. Just networking with people and just speaking with people. And they teach me one thing. Another person teaches me another thing. Um, I remember one time, so one guy who I always speak to is in China. He taught me all the things. He really was like a mensch, like you say. He really took his time just to like, you know, just to chill with me, speak with me and teach me new things. And what was he doing? He was, a, he was a factory selling on Amazon or he no, just so, a, so no, no, he did. He, ma he mainly sold on Amazon himself, um, but he was very well connected with all these Chinese people who are doing all these crazy services. And he was very knowledgeable. So he was speaking to me one time he said, so when you say all these crazy services, give us a little taste of, uh, of that world. What's going on there? You know, for, just break it down well, for us. That's, in a like nutshell, a, <laughs> that's like more of like more off of podcast material, meaning it just takes so long. Yeah, it's what but, they're doing. It's not saying yeah, you yeah, yeah. It's not like uh, sure. today, this is the, probably a few years ago. It's probably absolutely outdated. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's very outdated. Uh, all the things that they were doing to rank items, all the black hat things, things they're doing to attack people, um, how they're getting ton like hundreds of review reviews overnight, had to get with the bestseller, all that kind of like juicy stuff. I'm like, what is this? So he knew, he knew how they did it. it doesn't mean he implemented it. He just knows. And same thing with me. Like, it doesn't mean I implement all these things I learned. It's just very cool to know, like, you know, my opinion. So one time he told me, he's like, I have a stop from in Georgia. I mean, keep in mind, I'm in New York. Like, you know. Yes, so what in Georgia? Me, Sorry, what did, what did you say? He had a stopover. He was like flying at a stopover Oh, yeah, in yeah, Georgia. got it. Got it. He's like, he's like, I'm going to be there. So I'm like, hold on a second. I literally got up like eight or nine, at eight o'clock or nine o'clock in the morning. I booked a flight to Georgia, like the same hour, went straight to Newark, flew to Georgia, nothing with a backpack. Mm -hmm. I met him in a star. I still remember like yesterday. I met him in a Starbucks um, with a notebook and a pen. I said, give me all you got. And, you know, we went out for lunch, everything. And this guy was spitting facts like you have no idea. Like, I thought whatever you taught me before is crazy. He was telling me, he told me, he's like, this year, Prime Day is going to be July 26 and 27, something like that. I'm like, how do you know? It's like December, you know, you don't know anything. You fast forward, July 26 and 27, exact dates of Prime Day. Like, he knew real information. So I was like, taking notes, what's this and what's that? He created accounts for me, like, um, like, on, like basically, China has their own Helium 10 which they use, like it's a whole nother, you know, calculation. He created me an account and he paid for it, showed me, he just wanted me to learn. I'm like, why, who is this guy, you know? And I honestly owe him a lot of credit because he really got me started in a whole nother sector, another part of my business, but it was definitely very cool and, and you know, very uh, influential. Nice, nice. So I want to get back to uh, the moment you said where, you know, you're getting uh, more knowledge and more experience and more mm -hmm. reputation and more the business grows and you get more attention and then you're asked to speak. And then that puts you in a junction where you should do it or not. So what year was that? And, and what happened? You said, sorry, I didn't hear last thing you said. I was asked to speak and what? And then basically you're in a junction where you have to make a decision. Should, should you yeah. uh, speak in, in conventions and in, you know, educational events or not, or, or stay private? Exactly. Uh, take us to so those moments. To so. make, yeah. I needed to make that decision if I wanted to be a speaker or not. And I said, I'll give it a try. The first event I went to go speak, it was like, it was also their first event. So it wasn't so organized. It's on YouTube. You'll see. I had no idea what I was doing. I just knew some things I knew about Amazon, but I'm not a speaker. I could see I'm like holding a notepad. So I'm like, they didn't even give me a stand to speak on. They didn't give me a projector. It wasn't anything professional, but I got, they said, there's going to be 40 people come speak. 
So they advertised that I'm going to be there. Everyone heard my name, but never, no one ever saw my face before. No, no one ever met me before. Um, so everyone's like, oh, Mark Casey's going to be by this event. Everyone just started going. So there's supposed to be 40 people by the speech. There's over 120 people packed in that room. And this was local? You had to fly somewhere? No, it was in New Jersey. It was local, you know? So I'm like, okay, I'll go. And then like, all of a sudden, 120 people, all eyes on me, um, judging like, what's this guy got to say? Who is this guy, you know? So everyone thought I was like some guy from like Bangladesh, you know? No one knew that. Everyone's like, who is this guy? So it's like the first time I'm speaking, making a reputation for myself. Like, this is me. This is like who I am. And it was nerve wracking. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do with myself, but I ended up giving a speech over. People found it so interesting. People loved it. Um, and then, you know, everyone's like, come work with me. Come get my brand and everything. So from there, it just kind of like, it was a snowball effect. I had so many different offers. Uh, people give me job positions that I turned down. I went to, I got flown out to to London a couple of times in Vegas. I, I've been all over giving just random like speeches about Amazon. Just people are interested in knowing like, how the algorithm works and you know what's what, like what's the actual juice, like you know that not a lot of people I guess would understand. I just understand the algorithm in a different way. So much so because also what I did back, you know, going backwards to whenever I was uh, working on this nine figure brand, one of the things I did for them was create a shopper network. Um, meaning is like whenever they want to do rebates or promos or a sale or something, I was the one who started that myself from scratch. So that's one of the assets I took out of there because now nowadays we have over 20,000 or plus shoppers on that network, which we use for, you know, doing private launches and stuff like that. And that was a huge asset for me. Um, and not only just because we do launches, because I study the shopper behavior. I understand what shoppers look for. And if you're able to replicate that and, you know, you kind of make it like, you know, what they're doing organically, that's beauty, that's gold, that's key to get real feedback on your product from real everyday shoppers um, and implement on your product. And that's, people find that very beneficial. So that was definitely a great asset. Got it, got it. So, yeah, so we're now we're kind of uh, speeding into nowadays. We're, you know, recording this at the end of 2021. This is going to probably be published 2022. Yeah. Um, so you have established yourself as an SEO marketing agency. You worked with big, big sellers. You got exposed to the Chinese side of things and how they kind of work around and, and, and all the hacks and, and tricks that they are able to develop over time. So you're kind of in the mud, in the in, 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 in the inside of things to understand what's kind of working, what's not working. So I guess let's kind of try to dive into today's world. What's going on? Uh, you know, this past uh, few weeks, a few months, you know, past year, actually 2021, Amazon made a lot of changes with, you know, with ranking and search find buy and things like that. Can you maybe share with us what happened here? I, I'm, I, to be honest, not really my world. If you ask yeah. me about what happened with uh, discrepancies in FBA auditing, I have a lot of answers. But when it comes to that, you know, I'm a little ignorant. So, you know, share some light with me. Explain to me what happened in 2021. What is the meaning of all of this and where everything you think is going? Sounds good. Okay, so going fast forward to the beginning of 2021, I mean, Amazon was very always very strict with reviews. Six years ago, you could pay someone to leave a review and it was 100% allowed. Nowadays, Amazon has been getting slammed with all these review allegations and stuff like that. So they've been very strict in removing reviews, even stricter and suspending people and whatnot. That's how 2021 kind of started, where tons of people were getting suspended for that. Fast forward to now, they got even stricter with the search find buys, meaning whenever they came out with that message, it was very detailed. It wasn't like you just can't do giveaways and that's it. You know, like the olden days, they had viral launch. You could just do a hundred coupons and you rank the first page. Nowadays, not like that. People want to adapt to what's working. So, so how does this work? So once again, because assume that I'm, you know, even though who's living, uh, people might be listening to this. We have no idea what's going on here. So just to clarify, search five buy is when there's a link that consumers, I, I go to a website, I'm a consumer. I go to a website, I see this uh, product, instead of being uh, $49.99, right? Mm -hmm. 50 bucks, it's gonna be like $4.99. Like it's gonna be 90% off. So I click that. And when I click it, there's a link, a special URL link, that URL link inside, it makes it Amazon think that somebody went into Amazon, they search the product, they, they, they find it and they click on buy it. How does that work? That's kind of the mechanics of you said it. You said it very well. So in short, that's what it is. Basically, what you're doing is you're creating a steep discount um, for shoppers to purchase that product. Um, but in exchange, what you're doing is you're giving them a link. So what? why is it worth to give away a product at 90% off or 100% off? Is because you're getting something in exchange. What you're doing is getting, let's say, 50 people 
to purchase your product with a specific link. And that link kind of triggers Amazon's algorithm that you're selling with that keyword. And then Amazon's gonna rank you higher for that keyword. So doing that um, over uh, like, let's say period uh, over a course of eight days, um, all that together consecutively, Amazon will rank you to uh, the first page of that keyword. So and let's go back over with this. So we're meaning ranking just again, if anybody listening to this, not really well diverse with this, but even though it's kind of the fundamentals of selling on Amazon, Amazon has a best sales rank for every single item on its catalog. It can be number one or number 500 million. So the be- the higher you go or the better it is when you have, you know, your number one or, you know, top, top position, number one, like a race. So if, if the algorithm and Amazon thinks you're in a certain category, uh, the most, you know, uh, valuable uh, product, so it's going to make you number one, you're going to get a lot of organic juice, a lot of organic traffic. Uh, and people and consumers are able to find you on a platform very quickly. You're going to get a massive amount of volume uh, from and all the love, let's say, from Amazon to, to be able to really uh, explode in sales. So that's why everybody's kind of competing and chasing that BSR, bill sales rank, and getting rank juice, as they call it. Just to clarify mm-hmm. on that, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So exactly. Perfect. So basically what you want to do is it's, it's a marathon. So the people on the first page, let's say, for example, it's only, uh, let's say 10 pieces a day on a low, whatever keyword. Um, so what the whole point of this, when you're doing these giveaways, these sales is just to show Amazon, you're getting those sales. So you're replicating the sales showing, Hey, Amazon, I'm selling 10 pieces. They also, that means put me in front. I want to be number two. Also, if this guy's selling 10, I'm also selling 10. I deserve to be in the number, whatever spot he is. And then then there's the next step of surpassing that 10. Let's say you're selling 15 a day, then you're going to get higher and whoever's on the page. So the whole point of search, find buys, giveaways, rebates, and all that kind of stuff is to replicate a real sale. To show Amazon, hey, I am selling 10, 11 pieces a day. Bring me higher in the algorithm. Um, and then there's two different things. There's bestseller rank, your rank in the category, and then there's also keyword rank. So there's a lot of times where you can be, you can get a very low bestseller rank, but you're not necessarily ranked for uh, keywords. And then when you're doing keyword rank, it's what position you are for that keyword. So you could be ranked number one for the a small keyword and have a, a very high BSR, or you could be ranked medium, you know, or number 20 for a very large keyword and have a very low BSR. So they don't really always have to do with each other. But the whole point of, of like, I guess, of that is to create sales and to show Amazon you're selling with that keyword. That right, so you're saying relevant. it becomes a bit more uh, interesting because you have a best sales rank on, you know, on, on a product level within the catalog, but also best sales rank within the catalog of, let's, say it's, let's put it this way, uh, words or keywords that consumers keywords. are shopping for. Where you're for. ranking so, for those keywords. Exactly. Yeah, so if I'm a consumer I'm looking for toilet paper, whoever, mm-hmm. which, whatever uh, listing or product on Amazon has the best, uh, score or ranking score for that uh, keyword of toilet paper will rank first with the results. That's what's kind of, that's kind of the battlefield. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Got it. Okay. So 2021, there's a crackdown. Amazon is basically saying this whole model of all these platforms uh, or these mechanics of, you know, being to get, you know, being able to get a steep discount, you know, click a link that assimilates a real purchase and all that stuff. Basically they don't like it. They, they, they banned it. How, do, how can they even ban it? Well, what's the mechanics? So exactly. So they didn't ban it, but they put it in their terms of services saying it's not allowed anymore. How can Amazon tell what's a real purchase? What's fake? I'm sure they could. They're Amazon. They know a lot of different things, know a lot of data, but there's no real way to kind of catch on to see who is a real thing or not. But there is a little bit of a way, meaning if people are using links, Amazon could easily track down those links. Amazon's not stupid to see that someone's copy pasting or using a link. There's something to get very technical, just real quick, something called the QID. Whenever, <clears throat> whenever you search something on Amazon, uh, go to the first and second page, look on your URL, there's something called the QID and then there's a number. That number kind of shows each thing that you've done, what action you have done. If you go into the third page, sh- that little coding is gonna say you got to the third page. And Amazon basically- I would say them. QID is probably a query ID. Your query, you have a search, you're trying to find something or you're, you're exactly. browsing through the website and it has its own unique tr- transactional ID. So it knows it's coming from you, from your computer, from your IP, all that stuff. Yeah, so from there, Amazon sees this guy went to two pages, three pages, eight pages or no pages. You know? So that's what they tell. And there's also referral, meaning that if I open this link up from Facebook or WhatsApp or somewhere, Amazon knows where, where that traffic came from, where it's getting referred from. So doing both that together, they're giving someone a link, they see where it gets referred from, and they see that it skipped off three pages to go find the product. Amazon's not stupid. Amazon knows their system, and they could tell that you, you're kind of playing with the ranks, just, you know, you're playing with whatever just to get the ranks out. Um, so the best thing to do is organically, is organically have people search the product organically, type in the keyword, 
look for the product itself and then purchase it. Nothing to do with links, nothing to do with like all these different things that there are. Obviously it's very hard. It makes things much harder because the links worked. Um, but in regards yeah, the to the links were a shortcut, but you're saying people are going back to old school. Basically like, you know, this is a legit way of doing business, right? When you advertise on television, your new product, it's, it's a beverage. You say, look for us in stores, go to Walgreens, or go exactly. to Walmart, look yeah. for us in the store, in the drink aisle. Same thing you do with Amazon. You look for us, you know, on Amazon, search our name, search our product name. You'll find us. If we're not the first page, second, you'll find us. You'll buy exactly. and then you and click, no click you'll buy us. Yeah. Exactly. And that's no different than offering a sale. Like you, there's many times you could get sales or rebates or something at 50% off, like, you know, when there's a sale. So I guess, like, you know, that's where people are focusing and shifting to is making things more sale related as, as, as opposed to, um, I would say like a rebate that, is an exchange for obviously not a review, but in exchange for clicking links and messing with the algorithm a bit. I would say that. Yeah. So that's a, that's kind of in a nutshell what's going on. You know what ha what transpired in 2021 in terms of um, you know uh, 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 rebates and and search from by and ranking manipulation, all these components. So uh, uh, that's what happened, and this is what's going on. And looking to the future, you, you think this trend will just continue or? Uh, will other trends kind of develop to, to be able to get more juice and, and uh, sure. in a legit way and in terms of service uh, uh, way? What, what's the future? What does the future hold for, for uh, you know, Amazon sellers who like to really promote their brands and their products and uh, get good ranking? Definitely. There's a lot more to it than just doing rebates. There's a lot of things you could do to promote your product. For example, um, outside traffic, creating blogs and having influencers. There's a lot more you can do to create, you know, to promote your product. Um, my personal feeling, the way I see it is that like Amazon kind of closed that up. So people start selling more through PPC to rank their keywords. It's hard to say, I don't know what's going to be in the future, but the way it is that there's always something comes up for a solution for something. So whether it's not search farm by links, it's going to be something else to kind of replace it. But there's always going to be something out there that's going to, that's going to work or do it. But what I've seen work the best is just outside traffic, creating blogs, influencers, um, and just people organically searching for your product. You know, uh, that's if you're talking with no, no search term buys whatsoever. Got and it. also coupons on your listing. That's a very underrated feature that people don't take advantage of is adding, like you can still kind of do a rebate, um, but just adding a steep discount on your actual, uh, you know, on your actual product. And then that's the organic way of doing things. But yeah. Got it. Okay. So I'm an Amazon seller I'm on the beginning or intermediate or even advanced. You know, I see a company like yours, right? An agency like your, uh, like yours, House of AMZ. You know, doing marketing in in, in SEO. I mean, what wh wh what's your mission? If I want to come and engage, what's my what's your mission? What are you gonna you know do to a, to an Amazon seller that will thrust them and push them forward? And uh, what's the uh, mechanics of things as far as you see? Sure. It? So speaking, going back earlier, whatever I said, my background is marketing and branding, and then I have this Amazon experience. So I worked on their nine-figure brand, and I know what works. So mixing and combining those two together, that's how our agency kind of came into place. Um, and that's what we like to replicate and do for our clients too. We know what main images work. We know how infographics should be like. Um, and then also that I have the shopper behavior side to it too. I know what people are looking for on a listing. So having all that together, we have a great graphics team and a copywriting team to kind of make that come to life. Um, so a lot of times we optimize products and or listings that are already existing with tons of reviews and it's already there. We just add to it, add great graphics, add content, keywords that are missing, all that kind of stuff, or creating a listing from scratch, but just knowing what Amazon's looking for and also what the customers are looking for and combining that together. I, that's kind of the secret sauce that we have that, you know, we know what works. Got it. Now, another question for you. So looking into the spectrum, you know, you work with a lot of sellers and looking into what works, what not works. Uh, a certain strategy that I, I kind of recently heard was always keep launching. That's kind of a slogan I heard in one of the shows, always, you know, be launching, or always keep launching. I mean, some sellers say, or, or, you know, some communities of sellers say that uh, being able to constantly launch a new product uh, keeps you kind of in the game of what works, what not works. And then kind of obviously builds your portfolio. You have more products. You hopefully obviously don't just do, you don't just launch any products. You research them, make sure there's a market, you know, capability for them. There's demand, stuff like that. Um, do you see that kind of trend, uh, trend also with the, with your goggles and, and so, what you see yeah, uh, happening? I have, I have two, I have both types of clients. I have clients who have their 10 SKUs and that's all they focus on day and night. And they're investing tens and hundreds of thousands of dollars into those, you know, 10 SKUs. And I have people who are every month they're, they're launching two different products because they're jumping on trends and seeing what's good. So I've seen success in both. 
Um, if you're able to handle more, then why not? Especially if you have something that's proven, if you have a strategy in place that you know how to make listings and you know how to launch them well, then definitely I would say go for it. And you know, if you're able to handle it, but if you think it's, if it's going to be too much, I would definitely say, um, you know, handle, handle whatever you have now, like, you know, focus and make that your, those 10 skews your baby. Yeah, of course. I always have the nucleus that, you know, the core competency. By the way, when these sellers do launching, they do it, well, I think once a quarter or so every three months. So within a year, you get another three or four products launched. Mm -hmm. And that keeps you within the you know, honeymoon periods and what works, what now works. And then it keeps you, um, it's almost like, almost like staying in shape, you know? Uh, for Amazon, you got to stay in shape. So that's kind of yeah. the uh, strategy that I heard that's becoming very trendy. So I was wondering if you have some more uh, input on that. Um, also, um, you know, SEO within Amazon, but what about, uh, I know, I see there's also a trend going into uh, driving traffic to Amazon from Google. You have any insights on that? Yeah, that was something that's more recent that a lot of people are doing and actually gave a whole class on that, um, where Google traffic is is beautiful um, and to Amazon. And that also goes into with how you make the link and how you kind of kind of refer to Amazon, because there there is a way whenever you make that Google ad, um, to kind of input keywords in there. So not only are you going to get ranked, okay, through Google, but you're going to get ranked on Amazon through doing Google ads too, which is a really cool and interesting deep concept. If you actually think about it, that you could get ranked twice. Um, but even more so is doing articles and blogs and stuff like that, that could get you ranked organically on Google. That's, that's the best thing you want to do is to have people write articles about your product, um, give them the, the keywords that you want to do the SEO around. Um, and then have them link it to Amazon. So when someone types on Google, best, uh, I don't know, garlic crusher, that's what everyone uses, you know, best garlic crusher, and your that article comes up with you inside of it, then a lot of people are going to be going, referring to you to go on Amazon to A, you're going to get sales organically, and B, you're also going to get a lot more ranking juice, like you said, through that keyword, because it came from Google. Got it. Very, very cool. But, um, you know, I'm listening to this, let's say, and I'm a seller. Where do I find people who can do content for me? What's a, there's a platforms for that. Well, what's the trend? How do sellers so, are getting, you know, how they're getting, you know, good copywriters that are decent and, you know, and within, within their niche and categories. Exactly. So, I mean, I would say our copywriters are more focused on Amazon to create listings and to make sure all the keywords are in there. Um, when it comes to copywriting off of Amazon, so there's a company called Seller Rocket that kind of does that. And I was introduced to them and I, and I took a look at what they had. And it was like everything you gave my speeches about, that's kind of what they had to offer. Yeah, check out the Seller Rocket interview that we did. We, we you know, they're a uh, Gatita partner. We had an episode with them. Uh, so check them out. Interesting company. They're doing great things. So you're saying that that works? Yeah. So it's funny. So everything you gave my speeches about, like they, they showed me their demo and everything. I'm like, oh, wow, that's literally what I was talking about, uh, which is great because that gives you all the Google SEO and it gives you Amazon Amazon. CO2. Got it. Okay, so let's try to construct right a, a model. You know, this is 2021 end of it, and you know, looking into 2022, kind of the model for you know the Am typical Amazon seller who tries to sell their own brand, private label, as opposed to reselling. Because reselling is its whole different uh, universe uh, that's based on already uh, selling brands that have a good ranking, right? So you you, you basically you want to trade in those. So just to see if we got the fundamentals correctly of being an Amazon seller in, into 2022. Um, yeah, uh, so you got to have traffic coming from outside of Amazon. One way to do it is Google, right? Yeah. And mm -hmm. you have to kind of also be, be engaged with content creation. So you need good copyright and a good marketing team for that. Also, you got to be able to, within Amazon, do PPC, right? Also make sure that your listings are super optimized with the visuals, the infographics, the videos, all the keywords within the listing, right? What else? Yeah. Give me all, more layers to, to, to make sure they have, you know, when they, when they finish listening to this, they have almost like a checklist to say, I got it. I got it. Oh. Maybe I need to work on that, like end of the year or beginning of the year list. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So definitely I would say whenever you said the listing, it has to be solid. It really has to be solid. You have to keep in mind, there's so much that goes into a listing and not just going on Fiverr and getting someone to make you a listing. Do you audit? Do you, you have an auditing capability to kind of review a listing to say if yeah. they want to improve it? Exactly. So yeah, a lot of times people come to us, we do an audit and we tell them and we give them information that they can implement right away on their own. And it's very funny. We have a lot of companies that have in-house design teams and they still come to us for them, for us to do their design or even say, they say, hey, come up with like some kind of template or structure that my team, you know, our team could follow for. Um, but anyways, going back to what I was saying. So like, it's very important to have your visuals on point, uh, like your main image and everything like that. But going further is checking your keywords and updating them frequently. A lot of times your, your keywords could be great, but uh, Amazon already indexed you for those keywords. 
look into what's trending, what the new keywords are. When we do like a listing optimization, we go through every software, see what all the up and coming keywords are, and put them to your listings, your index for them by the time you're actually getting ranked. Um, and while those are, you know, the search volume of that is growing. Um, another big thing that people underrate and underestimate is putting Spanish keywords in the back of your listing. A lot of people are searching things and they live in America with search things in Spanish. Um, but so you want to get ranked for that too. A lot of people aren't thinking like that way. So if you're listening to this and you could do it, then why not be, you know, be the number one um, with all the Spanish keywords. Um, also misspellings, you know, like stuff like that. So definitely take a look to make sure you're optimized and have all the up-to-date keywords and, you know, you're, you're up to the you're frequently adding more to your listing, you know, keeping up with the trends. And, you know, I, I had a client that I, that they saw all these trends on TikTok, um, stuff like that. And they were implement, implementing those into their listing. So meaning that the listing looks great to the average buyer, but if someone's a user of TikTok and they understand a certain trend and they see it too, that kind of connects that too. And, you know, they could get more sales like that. Got it. So, you know, listing optimization, much, much more room to, to, to create more, uh, you know, great things. And it's, it can be very powerful. And these are actually very, very good tips. Give, give us two, three more points of layers uh, to, to be prepared to you. Also, traffic, as you mentioned, TikTok is another, uh, you know, strong, viable place to, to drive traffic. You got Instagram, so all the social media platforms. Give us another two, three fundamentals that sellers should have in mind. In sure. terms of so uh, be, just being to prepared. Quickly, yeah, just to quickly touch upon just like the listing optimization I was saying. Another big mistake I see uh, sellers doing very often is the A plus content. They're putting all their keywords on the actual image and Amazon's algorithm doesn't pick that up. Amazon wants to see, Amazon picks up all the wording you put around your image. So be sure that you could have a great design, but under it, there's, there's it's either a product description or A plus content. There's not both. A plus content replaces that. So you need to put the keywords, all the keywords and all that stuff to index for under the A plus content. So that's about that. Moving forward, so whenever you want to launch your product or whatever it is, or even if you just want to give it a boost, what I would recommend is to take 10 or 20 micro-influencers. The micro-influencers are people who have like 10 to 50,000 followers, I would say, as opposed to like ones at 100,000, 500, or a million. Um, get like 10 or 20 micro-influencers and have all of them promote your product at once. Doing that creates a lot of buzz from different categories, different demographics of people. Um, which will go purchase your product. It also creates buzz. So when, let's say, for example, like let's say these 10 or 20 people have something in common and their followers will be in common. If they see five or more, if they see other people endorsing this product, you're going to get um, organic rank. That's social proof. You're going to get sales through that. Um, so I would definitely say to, to kind of build up to do 10 or 20 micro influencers and then start building up your way to get bigger and bigger influencers. And it's underrated, it doesn't, you know, not, it doesn't have to be Kim Kardashian advertising your product. That's not what an influencer is. There's a lot of people who are influencers who have camping channels and who are random, what me and you never heard of, but their audience loves them for camping stuff. So anytime they advertise something camping related, people go buy it. Nice. Is there a certain platform uh, that you know of or a way to, to find a, uh, you know, a micro I know influencers? You, I know if you search it up, yeah. I don't know specifically the name, but there are many, if you search on, if you search online, you could find a lot of different uh, companies that kind of connect you with those influencers. But that, that was, that's a tip I would say to kind of, once you find someone, do 10 or 20 micro influencers and then build from there. As opposed to just one influencer has a bunch of different, bunch of followers. Doesn't, you know, just because I have a bunch of followers doesn't mean their conversion rate is good, you know? Right. Makes sense. Yeah, I think, uh, you know, to, to add to that, just go to social media, look for your type of products on social media and who's talking about it, who's rambling about it. And that's how you find an influencer, right? You see who's rambling, who's touching, it can be on YouTube, it can be on uh, Instagram. Try If you're selling camping gear, uh, let's say you're a camping light or a duffel bag uh, for, for sleeping, right? Uh, and, and camping, you try to look for that on social media and whoever you see is, a, is, is, a, is a, an influencer in those categories, just reach out. You can send a message. Or even comment on their listings, say on their their videos or whatever it is. A great video, great. How can I get in touch and learn more? And then create a you know build relationship with uh, you know a, a variety of uh, ten or twenty plus influencers. It starts snowballing it. If you have a good relationship with them, you know over time you can uh, keep on using them to keep you know a, you can schedule all these marketing blasts. Let's say once a quarter, once or twice a year. You time it with them with all the you know the your group of uh, micro influencers. So you uh, bring all this traffic from all these directions to Amazon and, um, and really juice up uh, your uh, BSR, your bell sales rank and uh, continue with your growth momentum. Uh, but once again, I, I think the main idea here is what I'm trying to get at is the layered effect. It's not just one thing that will make you, you know, super successful. 
it's layering all these pieces together in, in, a, in a way where there's harmony. You're going to have a strong, strong foundation with your e-commerce position within, within Amazon and hopefully outside of it. And you're really going to be able to build a brand where there's real following because, you know, one day you might be sending all the traffic to Amazon, but next day you might be sending all that traffic that it's built in, a traffic that really wants to buy a product to your website or another marketplace that launches. So do that. Create a you know, foundational system for you uh, and, and for your brand to really grow and scale with the digital domain. Okay, great. So I tried to milk you as much as I can, you know, today with this episode, <laughs> because I knew that it's kind of a lot of juice out there. So thank you for all the pulp that got squeezed. Uh, I want to sure. kind of do a quick recap to see what we got so far. So born and raised in, um, you know, Great Neck, New York, Long Island. And then uh, 2015, uh, uh, you know, growing up, you did a lot of stuff that were entrepreneurial. You, you, you know, you sold, uh, you dropped, shipped, you know, printers. You did, uh, you know, uh, design work and flyers for, for, for local uh, businesses. And also you got scratch and got, uh, you know, uh, the, the hard knock of, of business, uh, learning out of, uh, you know, taking deposits and stuff like that and not working for free. Uh, 2015 already kind of hit college and around 2017, uh, e-commerce came knocking on your door by a friend of a friend of a friend saying, you know, I have this kind of, uh, I'm involved with Amazon, what's Amazon? You thought it was, you know, this is kind of a hobby almost a scale, but once you open the door, you wanted to see the, the whole uh, structure. You saw this is a, you know, big time company today. They're in the nine figures. And that was, you know, you're able to kind of uh, dwell there and build your uh, e-commerce and Amazon fundamentals uh, in, in, a, in a company that's doing really big, big volume and big, big things uh, and successfully. And you pick all that up. And then, uh, you, of course, you already had your own business, you know, agency and, and experience of, of, you know, doing design and stuff like that. You send it all together, your, your affinity for design and good taste of doing good things and my marketing, but also, uh, you know, building stuff on Amazon and creating listings and, and uh, marketing them and, 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 and understanding all the SEOs. Then you also had uh, within China, the exposure to China, you know, the Chinese sellers, which are, you know, they have all these crazy ways of uh, doing things on the marketplace. So you're able to, uh, you know, you know, the benefits and the ins and outs of that. Um, and that's it. Now, you know, you also, uh, uh, you know, you're well diverse with the community. You go out there, you do presentations, you help other, you consult, you consult businesses, you consult your clients. You can sell the, the marketing, uh, the, the, the creative teams of companies as a, some, some sort of a standard. But uh, that's kind of in a nutshell, the, the story of uh, Mark Casey so far. Did we get it correctly? Yeah, it sounds good. Sounds pretty much good. <laughs> very, very cool. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, I think this was very insightful and I learned a few new things. So I appreciate that. Okay. Now I want to finish up the episode with two points. Okay. The first point will be if somebody wants to reach out and connect, uh, where can they find you? But the last thing will be is what is your message of hope and inspiration for entrepreneurs listening out there? All right, where you can find me, AmazonSEO.com. Shows the proof in the pudding that we own that domain, AmazonSEO.com or uh, HouseOfAMZ.com. Um, what's my hope and inspiration, I would say? Everyone says never give up, but take a different twist on it. Not never give up. Just look for the reasons that are positive and look at everything in, in a positive aspect and just focus on that and make it big. I could have easily given up so many times throughout this career, especially when those women screwed me over with a deli sandwich um, or times where I, you know, this guy told me, come work for me. And I could have said, no, I, I don't care about Amazon or e-commerce or many times where I've gotten very, very high, you know, um, salaries to come work for people. And I said, no, I, I have a vision. I'm looking forward to doing something. My passion is marketing and, and doing this. Um, and I pushed all the way through to open my agency and look what it is today. I'm like, I'm very happy with it. And I'm glad I rejected all those six figure offers because where I'm standing today, I just feel much more accomplished with that. So definitely focus on the positive and just push through. Yeah. So focus on the positive, focus what you think is good for you. I guess also good for your clients. Uh, be passionate about it. Take that, you know, let the passion lead and take you forward. Don't get distracted. If there's other beautiful opportunities, but you're not really fully calibrated with them. Then they'll help you keep on uh, pushing forward and finding a uh, long-term success. Beautiful stuff, Mark. Thank you so much. I wish you and the, you know, you. the team uh, much continued success. I hope everybody else enjoyed. Stay safe and healthy. Till next time. <laughs> Thank you.